Whereas in the postal world, they have control of picking up a package or having a package dropped off at a post office and then getting it on a plane and sent to another country. And then it's pretty much a black hole from there. And then it's on the other post that's, that's bringing it into the country to uh, clear and, and assess and collect duty and tax. All right, Clint, welcome to another edition of our podcast. Uh, as always, I think it's good to start out with a little humor. Uh, oh, I'm to, excited. Yes. So why did the stamp apply for the post office job? No idea. Because it wanted to stick to what it knows best. <laughs> and, and with that, I think that uh, kicks off our topic for the day, which is let's talk about posts and uh, postal DDP and why there is no postal DDP yet in the world. All right, let's do it. Well, Aaron Bezant, uh, my co-host, along with myself, Clint Reed, uh, uh, we're, we're C I'm CEO and founder at Zonos. Again, you are um, our head of global trade strategy, which means Aaron knows a lot about um, everything and um, a bit too much about it, about uh, some of these subjects. So this is going to be a fun one today to talk about. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Officially, this is the uh, uh, Decoding Cross-Border E-Commerce Podcast by Zonos. That, that's, that's the name. That's the official yep, name. That's the official name. I like it. Okay. I like okay. it. So next time in that intro... I, you'll you'll look, get you'll get it I, down. I was winging it. I yeah, was winging yeah. it. Decoding cross border. That's kind of been our tagline for a while now at Zonos. <laughs> is and and that on a daily basis. I mean, we we had a group of people just called decoders. Like that's what we called yep. them, and we still do. Um, uh, that their only job is pretty much just try to figure out the mess of everything that's happening. And uh, I think that's what makes this so fun is just figuring this stuff out because it is it's so fascinating. And uh, okay, last week. We were both all over the world. I won't specify mm -hmm. exactly where we went because we want to talk, I think, a little bit specific to, um, I mean, well, we can be generic that we both visited different posts around the world and kind of saw the the um, the customs clearance uh, process and collaboration with posts. So, But the overarching subject today is, yeah, postal DDP and why is this so difficult? And so maybe you can you get, get, it, get it started here. Why, why, for years now, the express carriers, UPS, FedEx, DHL, and consolidators, I mean, heck, consolidators use posts, so they're able to easily create these DDP solutions, um, the different, you know, mail consolidators around the world. There's a lot of them. Why can't the posts do this? I, I don't understand. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, they they operate a little differently than uh, than your other carriers. So if you look at just your classic uh, express carriers or consolidators, that's usually one entity creating a global solution and not many global entities trying to create a unified system. Uh, and that's what you've got in the post is it, you've got a lot of disjointed parties that each have their own interests uh, that are service, servicing domestically their country and they tie into a global system, but that, that, but they're, you know, getting the exporting post and the importing post to play nice together so that way the duty and tax can be paid in advance or billed back after the fact uh, once it clears in country. It's just, it's a beast to get it all sorted out um, because their their systems operate differently, their clearance is different, uh, and it, it can be done, but it's it's like herding cats, getting everyone to to kind so, of align and, and play nice together. So, so walk me through first a how how does this work for a, a consolidator? Actually, no. Let's start let's start with an express carrier. How it works with them? How they get DDP done? How a consolidator gets it done? And then because you're talking about how it's disjointed, right? Where, mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's actually going to be able. It'll be a little easier to visualize how it's disjointed if you understand why it's not just disjointed for the other you know carriers out there. So yeah, like like a DHL Express. How why why are they able to do this? Yeah, and I'll, I mean, we can throw this back to you too, Clint, because um, I know you have a little background in, in, in the express carriers, but really DHL Express um, or UPS or FedEx, um, they are in charge of, and, and they are either owning the clearance and the collection of the duty and tax themselves, or it's someone they've hired to do the, the clearance and collection. Um, so they're in complete control. Yeah, and, and they're in control of the package most of the time mm -hmm. until at least handoff to the final mile delivery yep. provider. 
but many times they're they're even doing the final mile. Um, and in that case, I think they're considered an integrator if it, they can go from point A to point point B the entire yep. way. Um, so when they're in control of that, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I used to work at you know uh, DHL Express and UPS and 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 had the experience there. But um, when it's getting clear, they're just handing it off to their own customs broker, which then is licensed with that country to clear the package, and they're now in control of collecting that money from the consignee or because they're the ones collecting them from the consignee, why not just collect it from the uh, export origin, right? From that, um, uh, from the exporter themselves. And that's how it becomes DDP is they, they move from collecting from the consignee to the exporter. Yep. Okay. So it is slightly different though with uh, a consolidator because these solutions can be, you know, um, created in, I mean, they're not easy to create, but it's not as not as extensive as creating a UPS, FedEx, or DHL. So, how, how, yeah, how I mean, much? But I think when it comes to um, even the consolidators, it's still very similar in the sense of they're typically just they don't own. Uh, they're usually very asset light. They don't own all of the assets. Like an express carrier is going to own many of the assets involved but they still own the relationships with all the parties involved to create the network um, needed to be able to move a package out around the world. Uh, and that includes whoever's brokering and clearing the packages and uh, where the duty and taxes get billed. So they still have a lot of control. So they, so they, they kind of can go out and select their broker. Let's say it's going to Canada. They find a broker that they feel like is best suited for where they're clearing the, clearing the goods um, uh, to do, you know, uh, bill the duties and taxes back to them. Um, okay. And, 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 and something else I've kind of observed with consolidators is it's not often that a service level is, can be a DDU service level, duties and taxes just collected upon delivery and duties and taxes paid. Usually they like separate the, the service levels, you know, from each other. And I think that's because, um, when they, they want it to go unpaid, a lot of times they'll actually move it through a post. It'll just be a postal move. Which we're yep. going to get to in a second. Mm -hmm. And then when it, they want it to be paid, the, cons the, the, the broker, this is not universal because I've talked to a few that do this, but the broker typically just bills the duties and taxes back to them and doesn't have a system to collect it from a consignee, which would be, you know, uh, I mean, that can be, you know, and we do that at Sonos. We help do the collection, um, you know, from consignees, but it's a lot of work to build that out. And so a lot of times they'll say, look, if you want to send this duties and taxes paid, here's a service level with its own rates, shipping rates, and a different service level with its own shipping rates, which then gets postal, postally cleared. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of been my observation in working with some of these consolidators yep. is they are out there picking and creating this. These They, they have a lot of control because they can choose who they're working with to get it cleared, right? They In both of these cases, an express carrier or a consolidator, what's key is they have control over the clearance process, yep. like full control over it. Full, full control. Um, and, and that's when we're talking full control here, we're talking about in the destination country where that Correct. package is being imported yep. into and where those duty and taxes are being assessed. Um, whereas in the postal world, they have control of picking up a package or having a package dropped off at a post office and then getting it on a plane and sent to another country. And then it's pretty much a, a black hole from there. And then it's on the other post that's that's bringing it into the country to uh, clear and and assess and collect duty and tax. All right, so that's that's the postal clearance side, right? So mm -hmm. we just talked about commercial clearance. Um, now let's talk about that postal clearance. And I'm really excited to hear about you know I've heard a little bit, but not a lot about your trip. And uh, you know, without giving away, of course, you know we want to keep things confidential, but. Most, it's this is a very similar thing that's happening everywhere, so no one could really guess. Tell me, tell me about the um, uh, the process that you saw where you were at, and for uh, bringing packages inbound to post, and then getting that um, uh, duties assessed and taxes when necessary, and collected. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm fascinated. Yeah, Can't no, wait to, is... to hear some hear so about I'll... some of the stories. I'll at least tell you what side of the world I was on or what, what region of the world. So um, I, w I was in Asia uh, and sounds like the little bit I've heard from your trip, which I'm excited to hear about that as well. It's kind of a similar process uh, on the on the clearance side, which is a lot of manual work, um, 
customs the, the customs agents are really the ones heavily involved in the in the clearance but really what they do is they'd they'd segment the packages to the ones that would have duty and tax due based on on the value um and the other was kind of just went flying on through and then they had uh they did have a scanner that would go through and the customs agents would would be what do you mean a scanner like, like a, an x-ray machine yeah right? yeah yeah, yeah. kind of like what you'd get at an airport do they do they scan everything mm -hmm. well that part i'm not sure if they scan everything or just the higher value ones i'm, I'm not 100 the ones that are getting assessed yeah. maybe okay yeah um but the main thing the customs agents were looking for uh were restricted items so whether it be cigars or alcohol or or something else uh but they would uh and when they would catch one of those items they would add a scale where they would actually weigh them and then tell the post what the the weight was. So they had a bunch of cigars. They would take them out, unwrap oh, really? them, and everything, stack them up on a uh, on a scale. And so if you're the recipient, you, and you ordered a box of cigars, they'd all be unwrapped when you when you got them delivered. It, so so the, <laughs> they unwrap the entire cigar, each individual one. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, and they'd weigh them. And and in in, in in this case with this country, because a lot of times um, things are dutiable when they're below the de minimis. Was that one of these cases where Ta tobacco is is uh doesn't really have a de minimis application um i can't remember exactly on that case um uh, but because like into the it, u.s that's the it's case typically, right typically yeah. i think most of the time yep. anything like cigars and stuff would be over the de minimis in this country anyways so got it okay. um but yeah they they stack them up on a scale and weigh them and then that they would tell uh the post the was it was it everything. the was it the um the post that was doing that or customs that customs was, was doing that part okay and yep. then they would that would then be instructions to the post on on the weight to use because these the uh, the cigars were based on. Why, the, why does the post the, need to know the weight? I don't. I don't. I'm, the duty amount because it was based on weight. But isn't customs the one that's coming up with the duty amount? Well, the post would take that weight, and then they have to manually hand key all the information in for the shipment into the customs website. Yeah, uh, and put in the weight and everything to to calculate the tax and the duty. And so the duty was based on the weight. So they'd actually, you know, put in. Wouldn't they just give the 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 collection amount to the um to the post? But they're or they're giving more details than that. They're giving the weight. They're giving the weight and basically telling the customs agent or the the postal agents what to enter into the customs website. Oh, so, so the postal agents are the ones that are entering information into customs website. Uh -huh. And then what customs uses that to then collect the information that's entered no, in? Customs isn't collecting. The oh, post the collected. post is collecting. Okay. Yeah. Which is all, which it does depend by country, right? Some, yeah. some countries we've talked to others where customs is the one collecting. In this case, the post is collecting and you're saying that customs is giving the post all the nitty gritty details for the post to then, why isn't customs just entering into the postal system themselves? I mean, they, to their own system. Uh, their main, honestly, their main thing is screening for restriction, restricted items. That, that's, that, that's what objective. they're worried about. That's yep. their main objective. Interesting. And so then they'll, and they don't trust the weight that's on, um, on the CN23. Right. They, they reweigh everything and take it out of the packaging and everything when they, oh, when that's they crazy. Weigh, which is crazy. And so, yeah, they'll, they'll screen for that stuff, get, get true actual weights, uh, that information gets relayed to the post and then it's literally someone is sitting down for anything that's, and this goes for anything that just needs tax assess too. Um, someone is hand keying everything into the, the customs website. Someone from the post. Yep. And then in that, in that uh, customs uh, portal, they'll assess the duty and tax. It all get calculated there too. Got it. So customs is giving the information, but the actual final, we're, I'm about to create something to go collect from a consignee. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to calculate amounts. This post is logging into the custom system to mm -hmm. do all of this. And the basically customs has said, look, we're going to do our thing, which is look for things that are restricted, high risk. We'll, we'll of course, weigh stuff. We can, we're the only ones that can touch the stuff inside the box. And then we're going to give you that information too. If, it, yep. if it's a, a t-shirt, let's say, would customs even touch it or open it? Or would the no. post, no. the post would do everything then. They're, they're the yeah. ones... Who would figure out the HS code? Okay, so what if there's any... Okay, HS codes. How does this work in postal clearance? Because commercial... Manual. Okay. Very manual. Who's the one looking it up? Or, uh, or how's it working? That's, that'd be the the, pers the postal person that's using it if they... And, and they usually just do, you know, the four or six digit, something very basic. On the inbound? Mm-hmm. They're only doing the four or six digit on the inbound. How do they calculate a duty rate from that? Uh, this... 
this country is very, very standard on the duty rate. Oh, okay. So, so they can, they, it's, it's, yeah, they, interesting. Just, it's, it's pretty loose, pretty manual, um, and quick and dirty on, on getting that stuff done. Um, because it doesn't affect the duty rate really. So the, the main thing they're collecting is calculating is the tax. Okay. Now collection, how's collection working here? Cause they, so once it's assessed, how are they getting the money? Yeah. So what will happen is they will, um, uh, they'll enter it into that system. In fact, you know, think about just creating a whole ledger of, of shipments coming through and then Customs will actually periodically pull from the post bank account um, for all those shipments, which means, they just which do a means pull. the post has to go and and actually collect. And this one's a little more advanced. They've got some, you know, email text. They've even got an app that you can use uh, that'll send out notifications. Uh, and then they every single one of them gets a letter sent in the mail too. So they're getting communicated with in in a number of different ways. So if you were a recipient in this country, you could go sign up. Um, and uh, create a, you know, get the app, sign up for an account, and then that, and put in your uh, contact preferences. Yeah. And so if they if they enter in your hand keying their your email and phone number, and they find you in the system, you'll get and they'll key off that. They'll, they'll key they'll off see that the information. Oh, this person this, likes oh, email, and um, right, and you'll get a notification from the app. You might get an email, maybe a text as well, depending on what your preferences yep. are. But no matter what, you're always going to get a letter in the mail too, which is. Um, and then they hold on to the package and wait for you to pay before they ship it out. So not customs, but the post is holding that. Mm-hmm. The they will not do delivery until it's paid. Correct. Okay. See, my experience was slightly different. Um, and I actually been wanting to talk about it as you're talking about yours because there's so many parallels. And so I, maybe now like, and we can kind of yeah, go it. back and forth. Because uh, I haven't heard everything about yours too. So I'd love to hear this. Yeah. So, um, you know, the post that I went and met with... Uh, I uh, very similar uh, experience in that this is manual, right? Um, but uh, uh, in their case, I just want to talk about the collection side and then I'm just going to actually, I'll jump back and maybe kind of frame the whole situation. But um, uh, th- this post every once in a while delivers it without getting paid the duty and taxes. They don't have a lot of great systems to uh, hold up the package and not deliver it. So the, a lot of times the driver's, they're supposed to know, but it's just not, it is not very good. And the drivers are collecting with cash on delivery. They don't have like, in your case, like this, this post had an app, um, totally different in this, in this scenario. So, um, I'll back up and actually kind of walk you through the the flow here. So when, when the package is coming to the airport, the first thing they do is drive this truck through this massive, like, uh, you know, it looks like a Stargate, you know, basically, you know, where you have this massive gate, they drive the truck through this thing. So they can scan it for radiation. And so they're, they're scanning this massive ship, you know, just, or is there anything in this entire uh, truck that is, that is, has any radiation wow, detected? that's fascinating. So if, if they said like, if there's even like radiation, like on a watch from something, like that whole thing, they will catch it. Hmm. So this goes back to that customs is worried about security first yep. and restricted items. They're, they're, it is their job to protect the country. And getting money is like a kind of a an ancillary thing that they need to, you know, that that's in their job description, but they're not very good at. Um, so this comes through and then I, um, I think I can talk about one. Okay. I, I won't, I won't, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be a little careful because I want to talk about one specific thing that's interesting too. There's a provider out there that helps a lot of the post track information and, and, uh, um, give them reporting, right? Just kind of like a centralized party. And uh, after these things come through the 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 Stargate, you know, which I want to call it, because it's like you got to pass through this thing to even enter into the you into the into the the facility, right? So you're going into this facility, this postal facility has to go through this this area first, and then there's this um um uh you know the 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 the, do- the doors right the bay doors essentially to enter into the um, into the actual facility get sorted and all of that and then what this third party provider will do is uh, randomly send shipments of just with like I don't know if it's an RFID or something inside of the a shipment right they'll just send like a box a parcel to track how well the posts are performing and so there's they have physical um, antennas inside the bay doors 
so that it can catch these things and see how well the performance is. Hmm. You know, that's interesting. Um, we did talk a little bit about performance. We, we didn't, the one I went through didn't have anything like that. Um, but they did mention how, when it came to their performance, when they scan that in and it, when it's now in the, the whole customs <clears throat> process, that time doesn't count against them for their performance metrics until it comes out the other side. Oh, that's kind of a black hole for their, it's like, well, we're not in control of that. Hmm. So however long that takes, it doesn't count against their performance metrics. Wow. When you can make your own rules, right? Absolutely. Which is kind of what, uh, you know, you see here in these, in which is so different from postal clearance and commercial clearance customs. So now, now we're in the facility, right? And stuff's getting sorted. And um, if there's a country that is on a, on radar, they get put to the side, right? Hey, like this country, we look at everything and then, uh, customs can and will just pull random packages in, whether it's over the de minimis or not. And there's a different room for customs. So when I used to work at an express carrier, I did a tour of one of their facilities and I still remember very vividly, like I'm learning how to become a sales rep, right? At this, and then they're showing me the entire process. And in the middle of the facility, there was a gated area uh, with like chain link fences and like slats and stuff. And if you're walking by, I remember the teacher saying, don't stare in there. That's customs. Don't, don't look. And you're kind of like looking to the side and, you know, you see customs in there opening boxes and they have their, and no one at this carrier either can go into that location. Like it was very secure. Um, I would say the post I was at was not so secure. It right. was like, there was like, <clears throat> it was kind of shared. Um but they do have their own area and they have x-ray scanners where they will put everything. If it's going to go to customs, everything gets scanned. Everything gets x-rayed. But not everything ends up in customs, right. you know, purview. So, and then we look over and there's this guy like with, you know, boxes on his desk. And he's, you know, keying something in. And um, later we got to go, you know, and talk with him about how this process works. So he's the one now calculating the duty. Now we're, this all goes back to Postal DDP. Like, why is this so hard? We'll, we'll get to that. But um, he looks at a box and he's hand keying all the information that's on the label into a system, into the custom system. So he's looking at the name, looking at the address and keying everything in. And then if there's an HS code, he's like, just puts in the code. And I'm like, well, what if it's, you know, the wrong code? It's like, well, they gave me the code. So this is a, a broker. This would not happen. Right, a broker would well, be th their butts kind of on the line, right? Right, the yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, they have skin in the game. Yeah, what's custom? Who's gonna get? Who's gonna get upset at customs? Right, customs. Right, right. So, so customs in in this case, in your example, customs is the one. Are they the ones actually assessing the the duty? Yes, and and taxes. Yep. That's, they're that's actually due. assessing it. So first, they have to put in the HS code, which their system will pop up the dutiable amount if they put in the code. If they do not have a code. They go to the web and they do a Google search. Okay. They, it's not like they go to a system first. They actually just go to web and say HS code for this thing. And they to Wait, also like an actual just Google, like Google search. search. Like yes. they're not. Yes. But they try to end up at they're this. They're not on like a government think, site. They are something. trying to get to their government site. I think through okay. Google. I think that's kind of where their aim is. But they start at Google because it's just easier to search Google to get to the right spot. Yeah. In, in that website. That. Right. Okay. Heck, we, well, I, a lot of people do that in the front of their own company, right? right? They'll, they'll, if you're searching for something at Zono, sometimes that's true. You just Google search it. So they're kind of doing that same thing. And then you start scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And it's like, ah, that, that, that code looks good. And they'll choose it. And the duty pulls and, it. And then when they choose it, when you, when you say choose it, it's now hand typing. Hand, it type, in. hand okay. typing in the code that they see on the web into the other system. I mean, a single process for one of these was probably 10 to 15 minutes. So for one box, did their system calculate the duty now yes. off of that code automatically? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Calculate the duty. And then he just, he uh, literally prints out the paper for collection and, and puts it in a plastic sleeve and puts it on the box, the customs agent. So the post is not doing this. Okay. Um, the post does get the information of what needs to get collected. I, I, I don't know if it was electronically or not, but he is putting the actual collection on the box. They are not mailing something to the consignee. The consignee is getting surprised at the doorstep, but uh, customs is the one in control of the whole situation up until that point. And then the agent was even telling me that like some people get upset about the, the dutiable amount. And he's like, look, this is the code you gave me. And they'll change the code. And he's like, yeah, look, you know, you save some money on duty. <laughs> and I'm like, 
Okay, that is a broker would not uh, 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 be so uh, um, so well, lenient. So, that's... And, and 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 it's also clear that, and I don't know about in your case. In my case, customs does not even assess everything. Like if it's over the de minimis, sometimes they just don't do it. It was unclear how often. They don't even know how. What we asked, they don't know. They're like, yeah, I don't really don't know. Maybe we could try to figure that out. Like how many items were over the de minimis and how much we attempted to collect on. So it's – they uh, they have their um, their own kind of – it's really their own de minimis is what it is. And they have their own rules and they get to follow them if they, you know. But if it gets busy, it's like, oh, it's busy. Oh, it's lunch break, you know, and it's Friday. It's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, then, then it, you know, after customs is done, it goes back into the, to the postal facility and. So how do the post know? Okay. So the, this just is, to clarify, because this is a little different, yes. um, similar, but different in the sense of, um, the process I saw was the post would be the one to say, okay, I'm going to take the information. I'm going to be the one to enter it in the into the custom system mm-hmm. that now calculates the duty and tax due. And then I'm the one doing that. So I know to, I, they actually do put something on the box too, as well as mail something, as well as email. I mean, there's tons of communication, but now the post is in charge of doing all of that. Um, but you're telling me the customs agent is the one doing all of that to, to assess the duty and tax. And then they put a le- put a physical letter on the box. How does a the post COD, ha- right? Yeah, collect ha- on delivery. Paper. How does the post know that it exists? So I'm not totally sure, other than that, there's a big red, you know, packing slip essentially, like with an invoice in there on the box. But I do think it is communicated to the post electronically. But this post does not have the systems in place to electronically collect like the post that you you were dealing with. So. Even though I think that did get communicated to them electronically because, oh, no, duh. Oh, I know the answer to this. I got the answer to this. They send them an Excel file every day. Oh. Once a day. Okay, so <laughs> Customs totally... sends the post yes. in Excel, yeah, which, the... by the way, there were spreadsheets and stuff involved yes. with the yeah. other one I was yep. seeing. That's, yeah, Customs that was sends actually... an Excel file every day to yeah, the post. The one I had was also <laughs> yeah. the post was sending an Excel right. file to Customs uh, yeah. every day that then Customs would use to, to charge mm-hmm. the post. Um, even though but, it was being entered in the – custom systems. I don't, I'm anyways, there was a lot of Excel files being shared around too. Um, but, but, but the, the, um, the, the main point of the Excel file isn't to help the, um, the post do collections or know what needs to get collected. It's for customs to collect from the post, from the post. Like here's what you owe us. So right? the post is fronting the money. Yeah. Is saying... It does happen though, where if they can't collect it and I didn't realize this, um, this post will take, they'll take possession of the goods if they can't collect it and they'll like auction it off. They'll sell the stuff. So, um, and they don't have to pay the duty if it's not. So is, if they deliver it, which this is, this is where this post can lose a lot of money because they don't have systems. They'll deliver the actual package, forget to collect because there was, the systems were broken. They have to pay the bill back to customs because it was delivered. But if it was undelivered, I don't believe they have to pay the mm. duty on it as long as they can just, you know, um, and they auction off the goods or or destroy them or something else, right? It's well, now, now, you mentioned there's no electronic collection. So how do, how do they collect? What, what's that process so look like? Driver shows up at the door, rings the doorbell, right? Soccer mom arrives at the door and, you know, bought something over the box woo, that came in from overseas. And the driver says, hey have a package for you. I need this much money and you can give me a check or you can give me cash. That's it. That's it. I can't like, can, can you Venmo me? No. I mean, can you, can I, can I pay with can't a credit use my card? Visa, can't, no, 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 no. There's no can like they, can they, tap pay. Is it only collected at, at delivery or can I, or do they send it, put a letter on they the put, door? They can put something. a letter on the door. You can go to the postal facility okay. to pay, but it's a similar process I believe is, and maybe at this facility at the at the retail counter, I'm pretty sure it's still cash and and so we got and we, and check is what is still going on here in this country. So we got postal delivery drivers just driving around with a bunch of cash and checks in their in their back pocket. Oh yeah, and how easy would it be if you're a postal delivery driver to say I forgot to collect it? 
<laughs> and then the you know the post has to then to pay the pay the duty and tax. So sounds all right. like a foolproof system. Uh, yeah, yeah. So why not just turn this to DDP now, right? Okay. So you're using a post office now. This goes back to at the beginning. I thought it was really important what you said. I want to bring it up again. These are two different entities on two different sides of the world that are moving packages between each other. So let's take we'll just take up India Post shipping something to Canada. So you have India Post and Canada Post now. Now uh, um, uh, going back and forth. And Canada Post is handing this off to India Post, which has its own system, which even they and their own customs agents don't have a lot of processes around. Whereas commercially clear packages, man, these brokers, they have it down. They know how to do all of this. Customs, it's like they're, it's a secondary thing for them. So because it's disjointed. Well, and, and it sounds like it's not only just disjointed, but everybody does it their own way. Everybody does it their own way. We, we we're talking about our experience from last week, but everything, I, I've had a lot of conversations that, uh, you know, have kind of illustrated that every country is a little different in the way these postal shipments are cleared and the duty and tax are assessed and collected and who's doing what. And so it's a different recipe for every single country. Every single one. So now imagine you're like, all right, it's time. We're going to do DDP out. We want... We essentially, okay, let's just remind the audience of DDP. We want to be able to allow a retailer to calculate and um, uh, collect duty and tax from a shopper and then pay us the post so that the inbound post doesn't have to collect no. it. Or, or, or if I'm going, if I want to mail something uh, to my grandma in another country. And I don't want her to have to pay the duty and tax when it gets delivered. I want to pay for it on right. her behalf when, right. I, when I take it into the post office. That would be another example for DDP. Right? And, and you're reliant on that inbound post and customs. And you don't have control over it because you don't have a broker that you're working with to bill it back. Yep. Commercial clearance, you have brokers. Postal clearance, you have customs and posts. Mm -hmm. And they all do it different. Sometimes the post collects, sometimes customs collects. And then if you want, now let's take the example of the one that I have, and we'll take the example of the one you have. If you wanted the duties and taxes built back, th there, this post has no mechanism today. They don't even collect electronically on delivery. How are they going to flip that backwards and um, collect it from the outbound post? And uh, now Zonos, we do this, right? Like, I mean, we we, we help posts do this. I mean, we, we have postal DDP into Canada, right? So you can send come from India Post, we can do DDP into Canada. Um, we can flip that to DDP uh, with IOS and UK VAT and, you know, some other areas we we have ways to do duties and taxes paid on postal. Um, where the systems we think we, you know, can allow us to do it or we kind of collaborate with the post and we have some more that we're actually rolling a pilot out, I think, with another one here soon, a big one, um, for duties and taxes paid inbound into that country. But this, this disjointedness makes it extremely difficult to get those dues and taxes built back. And then now what's the consequence for the post then what, what right now? Why, why, why do they care? Well, uh, uh, staying relevant. I mean, that's <laughs> staying in business on, yes. on cross border. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is like an urgent problem, isn't it? Yeah. I, no, it's, absolutely. It's they, public. The they, information that the, mo all of these posts, it's not, this is not like a handful of posts. All of them around the world are losing volume to, yeah, I mean, think of the if if you rewind, you know, twenty years, the posts were still really relevant with mail, right? But that's declined rapidly, um, and all of a sudden, their the, their profile of what they're moving through their network has completely shifted, and e-commerce has become a massive part of of, of what they do. Um, but e-commerce is evolving and the expectation and the experience it's, that's uh, expected of is that duty and taxes can be paid. At When I check out and I'm buying something, I want to be able to pay the duty and taxes up front. Right. I don't want surprises upon delivery. Well, well but, but even like 10 years ago, the post, well, they were living high in the hog because they had the mail and then they started to get the parcels. Mm -hmm. Because duties and taxes paid wasn't as big of a problem. There wasn't as many... Um, competitors out there for the posts that yep. were doing a paid solution that was that was price competitive, and now that that's happening, their volumes are just whoo, you know yep. tanking. Yep, and, and it's and it's going to continue to go that way. Um, if if they stick to DDU only, they yeah, staying in business is going to be a real. Struggle. Oh no, really? For for 
for international, right? The mm-hmm. domestic, they could, I could totally see them continuing to domestic and then having to either have a contracted service with a third party to have their own international, but it just, it's no longer going through this, the, what we described today, this postal clearance, because there are benefits to postal clearance. And maybe we should talk about that. Like, wait, okay, Aaron, could a post do a commercially cleared service? Absolutely. Okay. And a number of them do. All right. So, but why do a number of them don't? Um, uh, money, resources, uh, expertise. Um, and, the, and, and, and they're kind of tied, a lot of them are tied in with government entities to where it's, it's foreign to them. There, there's there's also a cost difference, right? So when when it's getting commercially cleared, it's not moving through the same physically sometimes, right? Like it's not moving through the same um, uh, processes, my understanding. But also uh, postal clearance gets special treatment and they lose that special treatment it depends, right? It does depend on which country, but they lose some of that special treatment if they move to a commercially cleared option. Well, and, and most of these, um, most of these posts that are are spinning up a commercially cleared solution, they're doing it with a sister company. Yeah, they're, they're creating a whole other company to go out and compete to generate revenue, so that way they can stay relevant. Because um, they can't do it with just their postal yeah. service alone, and some posts just aren't equipped to be able to and and set up in a way to be able to go out and and be entrepreneurs in that way. Yep. Okay, I want to uh I, I want to take five minutes and talk because even internally I think some of our team has a hard time understanding this product that we're now offering, which is Canada Post DDP and why it's so cool and different than um a normal DDP. So you can you can kind of ask me some questions, but I kind of want to go through this. Um, one of one of the things that we're doing with with Canada Post today on the stuff that's going inbound, it doesn't matter which country it's coming from. So if a post is out there and they're looking to create a DDP solution and they're listening to this to this podcast, um, we can do it for them today into Canada, um, Europe, up to a certain value, mm-hmm. um, UK, UK up to a certain value, Norway up to a certain value. Uh, we can we can support retailers Australia, New Zealand. Um, they have a couple more coming yeah, online. And, and even Singapore as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now um, let's talk about our Canada one because this is where postal – so postal clearance into Canada. I'll talk about a DDU experience first where duties and taxes are unpaid going into Canada. If you're an international shopper in Canada, the reason you want a lot of times to pick a postal delivery option is you know it might not get assessed duties and taxes. This is especially true in Canada. Canada. Mm-hmm. We we talked about this on the De Minimis podcast, I think a little bit ago, where um, uh, there's the official De, Minim- De Minimis for Postal, which is 20 CAD, correct? Yeah. For, yep. 20 CAD. 40 CAD for the for the commercial, but 20 CAD for, for postal. postal. Yep. But then they don't really do 20 CAD. It ends up being, you know... Well, uh, I don't know. Is it Friday or, or yeah, Wednesday? Right, right, right. Uh, right. Yeah. So once that value starts getting in the... 70, 80, 90 range. So, you know, so we, we we're able to observe a lot of these shipments. We kind of know um, uh, based on a lot of different things when it will get assessed. But a lot of times stuff under 90 CAD for the most part, when we do a calculation for duties and taxes with Canada Post, and it's, let's say, a 60 CAD shipment, 60 CAD's the value, we're going to guarantee that duties and taxes are zero. That's our calculation. Our calculation will be duties and taxes are zero. And we'll just guarantee that amount. So the shopper then, if they're comparing that to a commercially cleared option, especially if duty is high and tax is high too, by the way. So this isn't just duty. Uh, it's also there's, GST. There's a bit of a secret on uh You on know a lot about this. Canada. They don't charge duty yeah, th- at all. So so even if it goes <laughs> over, and, and when we calculate that too, right? We're not going to calculate right. the duty on yep. that. So Because we know they're not going to. So do they? And then how often are they calculating the provincial service tax? Do you know? Is that... I actually don't know uh, that myself. That one, um, that one, I believe they they do collect that. Okay, one. Um, but yeah, for it, yeah, it's uh, it, the land of cost on that is a lot lower yeah. than any other service. Even though the de minimis is technically twenty CAD, right? The actual cost of of what's happening in practice is is a lot lower than than what than what legislation so, says it should. So be. even if the shipping costs are 
more expensive. Let's say that they're with a with a postal option. Let's say this is India Post again. And let's say shipping is a little more expensive than shipping it with a different courier that's doing commercially cleared. It's going to Canada. Shipping, let's say, $15 and another carrier is $10. So it's $5 more expensive to ship it. And let's say this is a, let's start with a, you know, um, a 60 CAD order, dollar order. Um, obviously, that 5 bucks is eaten up with collection fees, the brokerage fees, the GST, the duty on that on that shipment, correct? Mm-hmm. So probably going to be a lot more than, um, uh, I mean, just just tax alone into Canada depends on the province. Let's say ten percent. So right there, sixty catch. That's six bucks alone and just tax. Maybe a little more, and then then you have the duty on top of that, right? Which if that's another ten percent or twenty percent, I mean, you're you're getting upwards of ten, fifteen dollars. Well, think uh, so. Apparel going into Canada is an eighteen percent duty. Whew. Okay, I never that's per- okay. I got to remember that one because that's mm-hmm. that's crazy. So eighteen percent. That's thirty percent that they're probably saving mm-hmm. in on sixty cat. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna stick with the apparel one. So uh, what's that like? Eighteen bucks. So the eighteen dollars in additional. Um, uh, I'm, I'm probably doing that wrong, but um, no, am I? Was I close? I'm gonna I'm gonna run a I'm gonna run a quote here. Yeah. Oh, you're using do. using yeah. the Zonos. Yeah. Calculator yeah, for right, uh, uh, Atlantic me... cost. All right. Then I'm going to give you another scenario here too. Yeah, so let we can... me, uh... so uh, it, anyone can sign up for this, right? So in fact, we're just rolling out and have rolled out um, a calculator on our website. So you can actually get these calculations. But um, yeah, let's see, what, let's see what we can find here. All right. Let's see here. So I'm just going to use our quoter tool that we have that all of our customers have access to. It'll auto-classify the product for you. Yep. Just type in T-shirt, calculate the the import duty, the import tax. So let's, uh, yeah, let's, because we know yeah. a T-shirt. Uh, well, how expensive is this T-shirt? 60 CAD. That's what I want to start with. 60 CAD? Yeah. All right. Because that was my example. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh I can already tell you what that's gonna gonna come back with. What? Zero. Well, yeah, with the post. Yeah. What if it's not a post though? Oh, you want to do an auto post? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Um, let me change. Because uh, then we'll go above. We'll we'll do a comparison above and below. Because what I'm trying to, you know, frame for the audience is how much can be saved by doing DDP into Canada. So, what service level you want this to be? I mean, we can make this just DHL Express, I guess. Okay. Let's see. And DHL doesn't charge terrible fees. So, um, you have for that sixty dollar T shirt thirty dollars and five cents in duties and taxes. Um, just so you know, what province are we going to? That was British Columbia. Okay. So you had uh, the GST worked out to be three CAD, and then the provincial sales tax added another four twenty. So that's seven dollars and twenty cents in in sales tax. Um, this was below the duty to minimis, so so oh. there was no duty because it's actually the duty to minimis is one hundred and fifty CAD for ah uh, okay uh, uh, for commercially cleared goods, but it was twenty two dollars and eighty five cents uh, in carrier fees. Oh boy! So now, give me one that's two hundred cat. Okay, let's take a look at that one because now we're talking something dutyable. How would that compare? Uh, a uh, two hundred cat shipment, t-shirt, eighteen percent duty. Maybe going to the same province. Is it what was British Columbia's? Um, yeah, GST percent was it? Uh, that one is. 7%, 7% plus the five. So I think you're 12% total. Okay. And all right, let's go DHL Express again here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we want to compare the Express versus the Postal. Yeah. Because for sure we're saving money on that first shipment. So an online retailer, if it's, if, if it's, I mean, obviously, instead of it being like 30 cat, it went to, 
we would just charge a fee to guarantee it, which is super minimal compared to that, right? But we'd save, you know, the continent 30 bucks. Uh, yeah. And so we've got, oh man, should have prepped this one ahead of time. I forgot to change my country of origin. Um, oh, because yeah. it was probably getting special treatment for duty because of the, the yeah, origin, maybe? Yeah, it must have yeah, been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have a feeling you had a U.S. on your, it must have been. On your yep. um, origin country, which we talked about in another podcast that the U.S. gets... Um, yes, let uh, me... Uh, I'll ver- yes, if it's sure enough, I did. USMCA, then um, it's, it's not going to um, uh, be dutiable. Let's try this one last time. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So it was $87.17. This is a 200 CAD shipment. Mm-hmm. $87 in fees, duties, taxes. Yep. 36, uh, $36 in duty. Um, and then the GST was um, $11.80. And the PST, that's the other 7%, was $16.52. Now remember, the taxes are also applied to the duty amount. So that 18% duty, that $36, uh, that's now added into the customer. So there's additional amounts because yeah, they, they had to tax the duty. Yep. Yeah. So the taxable value is in Canada, they don't do CIF, um, but it'd be the product and any duty assessed on that product is now the taxable value. And that's what tax gets that's applied crazy. to. And then of course your, your $22.85. Uh, um, okay. So it was $87, fee. right? Mm-hmm. How much is it if it was with a um, the Zonos Canada Post? DDP solution, right? Going to Canada for that same shipment. Uh, At least this is until customs changes things, right? Like absolutely, heck, customs CBSA, give us a call. We have the heck, we want to give you the full amount. <laughs> we'll give you the money. Like we can calculate the correct amount. But what we don't want to do at Sonos is ever calculate more tax or duty than to actually being assessed. And so what we're trying to do is what we're in the business of predicting what we believe is going to happen at the border, not in the business of only calculating how it should have been calculated. And there's a, there's a, that's, that's a, that's a key difference there because it is anybody can, you know, not anybody, it's actually really hard to build a, um, a really good DD and tax calculator, but calculating duty and tax isn't enough. You need to know the behaviors and predictions of what's actually getting happened on the other end, which includes these fees that are getting charged. It's not just duty and tax. Uh, uh, especially with postal clearance stuff, like what their kind of internal de minimis, de, de minimis is, right? That's not, you know, following the, uh, the actual letter of the law. But, um, okay, 87 CAD. It's uh, 24 bucks. 24 bucks. Yeah. Oh, it's like 12% tax, right? Um, $200. That's all, that's all it is. Does this include the fee for collection? Uh, no, we're actually not charging that right now. Okay, that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other conversation. All right. So, um, yeah, that's crazy. So, I uh, that is a sixty dollar difference in duty. Like, what kind of shipping method is going to save you sixty bucks? Right. So, anyways, there's a lot of creative ways we can help. All of these I, posts. You're looking to compete. Now let's, okay, I'm talking well, to the post I, now. I, I want to talk a little bit about- Jazz, Kate, you talk I, first and I, I then I'll get I want to talk a little bit about I'll, the other options that are out there because one thing we we failed to talk about was a postal DDP solution that is in play and has been for years now between the US and Canada. And that's their, uh, I call it the chargeback program, if right. I remember right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is strictly for PQWs. That's postal qualified wholesalers. So when, when you have to have talking, a lot of volume to do this. When we're talking consolidators yeah. and stuff, what they do is uh, there's a number of them out there. They do the first mile. They'll they'll pick up uh, uh, from the customers, from the shippers. So this is only for larger shippers. It's not it's not accessible to to small shippers or for for consumers. Um, but they pick up the large volumes from from these uh, large shippers, and then they consolidate them and drop them into the postal system, usually somewhere in Chicago or somewhere else, right? And they inject them there, and they're done. So what they did is they they cut down the cost, the, the pickup costs and stuff for um, the post, and they have a relationship and an account with the post. So what will happen is USPS worked out an arrangement with Canada Post 
to where when those clear Canada posts will recognize those. And instead of going and collecting from the recipient, they'll turn around and bill any duty and tax back to USPS, who will then bill their, their PQW partner. So that what that does is it makes it so these PQWs have a, a DDP solution. But guess what they have to do? They have to figure out a way to charge their customers for the duty and tax. So for the shippers, I, I've seen it done a number of ways. Um, some of it's the simple, they'll just try to bill them as the duty and tax come through. Um, but I've seen some really creative ones where it's, they just charge, they, they kind of play the averages and then just say, hey, we're just going to add six bucks to every shipment mm -hmm. uh, and it covers duty and tax. And now that, that postal partner is kind of just playing the game of like, well, I, I think- or, or maybe they're making money. I mean, who knows, right? They're making money, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but they're just playing the game right. of, hey- just keep it simple for the, for the shipper. Which, which I understand, totally understand. And, and But what that does is that means a small percentage of these shipments are actually having duty and tax assessed, right? Right. And so, but they're having to add that six bucks or whatever whatever the cost is. I've, I've seen a few different pricing models out there to every single shipment. And so what you have is the low value shipper shipments subsidizing the high value shipments. Yep. And then that impacts conversion because buying behavior suddenly changes. Right. And so the beauty of what we're doing is, hey, we're going to add a little more uh, sophistication to the process where we try to predict when it duty and tax is due. So on those low value shipments, we can confidently say, yes, we will guarantee there's going to be no duty and tax. And then that'll help increase conversion on those. And then on the higher value shipments, we actually uh, it, it, collect what, it, is, what is going to it's be It's transparent, due. right? If it's mm – -hmm. okay, so you're, you're, you're a, um, a constantly in Canada you're, or you're, you're, a, you're a shopper. You see at checkout that there's duty and tax, and it's like a 50 cat shipment, and you're like, and it's coming USPS. You're like, I would never get hit with duty right. and tax. Why is this? Yep. Why are you charging me this? So it hurts conversion. They're like, well, I'll have to go to your competitor, you know, um, which doesn't has it might even be a DDU program, but at least I can choose post. And for 50 bucks, I know I won't get hit with anything. So that's not good. Um, it, but okay, I'm India Post. Can I use this chargeback program? No. 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 So that's, this is where if we have, right, that, that capability to help these posts compete with DDP right now, and it's especially into one of the most important, re like U.S. is a very, very important region, and we can help with the tax and all of that in the U.S., but that's everything over, I mean, that's easy on bucks, right? So this is not... Canada is probably the biggest pain point for everyone around the world because it's one of the biggest destinations that has such a low de minimis that gets charged a lot of stuff. And when you're telling me that we, you know, you can save uh, 10, 15, $20 a shipment when it's low value and when it's high value upwards of like, what was it? What did we say? 60, 60. bucks, mm -hmm. 60 CAD. We have a program already that posts need to be competitive here. They do not need to just like, like you don't need to cover the whole world right now with DDP. There's a lot that we can already do to help them. And we already have the mechanisms in place to turn this on. In fact, sometimes it's overwhelming because these posts think that they need like, we then have to have all this stuff go into our system, communicate with that, that post on the inbound. It's happening like, all you get, how do we make this work, Aaron? How, how does this work? Is this, is this hard to set up? No. What do we need? A tracking number. That is it. That's it. Give us a tracking number. So, yeah, manifest happens in India or whatever, you know, outbound country it is. Send us the tracking numbers and we'll be able to build back the duties and taxes either to the post or to if we're working with the, the, the merchant in that country with that merchant. So, and we're expanding this right now, like uh, across the world, other options. So, anyway, this, is, this has been a, um, a topic I've been wanting to talk about for a long time is uh, just how cool this program is. And Postal DDP, though difficult, if I'm to summarize this, with, with, with Zonos, and, you know, we don't do a lot of sales pitches on these podcasts, but with us, like, we have already all of the ability to calculate the duties and taxes, to collect the duties and taxes, whether it's from a consignee or from a, from a you know, a shipper, right, the, the, the seller. Um, and collect it, right? Yep. So we we can do the whole thing, right? That, that it's and 
hopefully start turning some of the volumes for these posts um, uh, and have a extremely competitive program that they can then offer to marketplaces to their to their to their sellers um yeah and i mean if you think about it we're in the business of making this process easy for retailers and for posts um and posts are really trying to win the business from these e-commerce retailers and if we're working directly with the retailer we can support canada we can support ios we can support uk Norway, we can help that retailer support Australia, New Zealand. Next thing, in, uh, now we're talking about all of the major, major yep. lanes. And did, did you mention U.S. in there? Oh, and the U.S. The U.S., which is super yes. important because these these retailers that are in Australia, because we we have mm-hmm. a whole team in Australia, and they're utilizing our solution where we help calculate, collect, and remit all of the tax for them inside the United States. So it feels just like a DDP shipment, even, even into the U.S., yeah. And, and you add all of that up. And even though you might have a, you know, this, this disjointed, uh, uh, postal network because we can leverage the low value tax schemes and we have Canada, um, you're like 90% of the volume can be covered. Yeah. Yeah. And then now it's, a, it's a matter of that. Uh, of course, that diminishing rate of return, that last 10% is, is really difficult, which we're going to get there. Um, but today you have an extremely relevant, uh, DDP product that can be offered when, when working with us. Hey, well, this is awesome. No, call us 800-942-0721. I'm kidding. But, uh, heck, you you know, audience can email us at any point. Mine's Clint at Zonos.com, Aaron at Zonos.com. Uh, you can totally reach out to us. But again, what what we try to do with this podcast, again, we're decoding, decoding cross-border e-commerce. Um, but as a company, that's what we're doing too, right? We're, we're trying to make this simple for everybody and, uh, man. Okay. Aaron, when we started this podcast, we were, we were coming in. How long are we going to talk? You know, hey, Aaron, we, well, let's talk about this. You're like, how, how long do you think this podcast was going to last? Yeah. Not as long as it did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Hey, thank you everybody. And, uh, for those intense cross-border e-commerce gurus out there, I uh, hope we gave you a taste of, uh, uh, you know, the chaos and, I'm looking forward to to our next discussion, which uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll talk about carrier fees. Um, heck, we could just talk about duty, just duty. I mean, there's so many different subjects that we could talk about. And if the audience, if there's anything you want to hear about, uh, let us know. All right. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Aaron.